Welcome back, it's me, Lou. I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review, and today we are featuring this. Marvel Legends Guardians of the Galaxy Death's Head 2. Okay, so this is a much older figure. I believe this came out back in 2016. Um, it's a figure I already have in my collection, um, but that one I have mint on card. And I ordered another one just because um, I need this figure as the base body for an upcoming custom action figure um, I'm going to make. So I figured, um, uh, you know, while I was at it, I may as well take this figure, open it up, and do a re quick review on it. Um, especially if you haven't picked up this figure. Um, it's much older. It's almost six years old. All right, so let's get started. Uh, so we have Death's Head 2. Um, if you're familiar with the character, the original Death's Head, I believe, originated from uh, the Marvel UK end of comic books. And this is the second iteration of the character. Um, he was completely redesigned um, from the original design. And let me grab the original character real quick. Alright, so this is the original Death's Head as he first appeared in the Marvel UK. Um, this character is actually really popular with Transformer fans. Because if I remember correctly, I think in the Marvel UK Transformer books, um, Death's Head was a bounty hunter who hunted down Transformers. Um, I think, you know, just correct me if I'm wrong, it's been years uh, since I read any of those books. So this was the original Death's Head design. Um, at some point in time, I want to say maybe the late 80s or early 90s, uh, Marvel had this initiative to like kind of push the UK content in America and also like some of the UK creators. So there was a Death's Head miniseries. I think it was a miniseries. I remember it was illustrated by artist Liam Sharp. And um, this was Death's Head 2. So over here on the back, nice illustration and quick bio. Um, a cyborg hero with a repertoire of super abilities. Death's Head 2 has incredible physical strength and an even stronger personality. Yeah, so it's a pretty neat figure. It's part of the Guardians wave. Um, I believe this was for the second Guardians film. And if you collected um, six of the figures in the wave, you'd be able to create Mantis right here. And uh, Death's Head was kind of like a standalone figure. He didn't come with a Build-A-Figure build piece. Alright, so let's get this open. Uh, I really don't want to ruin the package in the event that I need to repackage this guy. Even though I'm using him for a custom, um, I still might want to save the box. So, And over here we have a Guardians of the Galaxy uh, cardboard insert, which is odd because I don't think Death's Head was ever part of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, here's the figure. Um, he looks great. One thing, I, I was staring at this figure for the longest time because I couldn't figure out what this body was reused for. It's a very different body than some of the other Marvel Legends figures. Um, especially for the taller, bulkier characters. This one's still significantly larger. Like, for a, for a moment, I thought they might have used this base body for maybe a Venom figure. But I didn't have any Venom figures in my collection where this body would fit. And uh, it's a pretty large and hefty figure. Um, I'd say he's probably about the same size as Marvel Legends Colossus, um, if I had to like estimate. Uh, very solid design. He's kind of like, you know, part of it kind of does remind me of the Predator. Especially when you get up to his face um, with the brow and the way the front of his mouth is kind of arranged. And then he kind of has these long tendrils in the back of his head. Nice sculpting on the musculature on his torso. 
Um, he kind of has the like Colossus metal bands wrapped around his arms. Um, I do believe this uh, hand here is actually the Colossus um, fist, just repurposed for a death's head. And he comes with this giant, like, multi-purpose blaster arm with all sorts of blades and um, a blaster. It would have been nice if they actually drilled out the barrel of the blaster, but they didn't. Um, he has this weird belt that covers his crotch with this cod piece. Uh, his boots kind of has these fins on the side. If you're making a custom, these would be kind of cool to use for like maybe a Batman figure. Um, his finish is kind of a nice candy blue finish. I'm not sure if the camera's catching that. Um, in terms of his height, uh, this figure comes in at about... It's a, it's a taller figure, so it's um, uh, about a little under seven and three quarters. Uh, like I said, the base body, it's, it's kind of very basic and generic. I mean, he doesn't have a whole lot of bells and whistles past this forearm. You know, everything that's visually interesting about this guy is on his arm and his head. His body and legs are very generic. Um, that's why I wanted to use this as a base body for a custom Nice sculpting on the face. Um, his mask is kind of torn off. and he could, It's either his mask or his flesh is kind of torn off. And you can see his muscles and bones underneath. It's kind of gruesome. Articulation-wise, this guy's head rotates. Um, but due to the nature of his hair, and it's also a stiffer plastic, it, you don't get like a full lot of rotation unless you tilt his head down. Um... And if you're curious, his horns are a rubbery plastic, so they're not going to break very easily. He can't look up only forward because of his um, hair, but he, if you arch his back, he probably could look up a little bit like so. Um, he could look down about this much. Uh, his arms rotate. They go out. A bicep cut so that it swivels. Nice ratchet, too. You, could, you might be able to hear the ratchet. Um, unfortunately, this guy only has single jointed elbows, so they can only bend so far, which is all right. I don't mind it all that much. Um, he has an ab crunch, so he can lean forward and crunch uh, pretty far forward for a big guy, and he can arch back about that much. Um, he has a waist cut, so you can swivel at the waist. He could kick forward about this much. Kick out, not so much. Thigh cut. Um, double jointed knees. So you have that going for him. And he has ankle articulation. Yeah, so it's an older figure. It's a very solid design. If you're fond of Death's Head or the Marvel UK books, this might be something worth looking into, but I think for the average casual Marvel fan, uh, this character might be a little bit more on the obscure side. But, you know, he has such a, a unique look that I think it'd be very eye-catching for any display. Especially if you're really into the, the more galactic side of the Marvel Universe. You know, like with Silver Surfer, Thanos, and the Guardians. Um, this would be a much, you know, appreciated figure in your display shelf. Especially since he's a lot taller, too. You know, he'd tower over a lot of the other Marvel Legends. So I, he's definitely an eye-catcher. If I had to rate this guy on a scale of 1 to 10, for me, an easy 8.5. Um, I love the way he looks. It's a very solid figure. Um, he could do with more ar articulation in his elbows, but for the most part, I think it's forgivable. Yeah, he's very imposing. He looks awesome. And if you have this figure, even though it's out of scale, I, I do think that, you know, this is a good follow-up. So I think it's worth the purchase. And for a, a figure that was out six years ago, I believe the prices on this guy is pretty reasonable. You're only going to be paying, you know, a couple dollars over the original retail price. All right, so let's wrap this video up. Once again, my name is Lou. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. 
If you are a returning subscriber or viewer, thank you so much for your likes, comments, and support. I greatly appreciate it. So until the next video, be safe, take care of yourself, buy lots of toys, and most importantly, be happy. And I will talk to you later.